Welcome back everybody. Well, 2022 is officially behind us and I don't know if I feel happy about that or panicking at the speed at which time seems to be passing us by lately. However, here we are. It is day one of 2022 and I know I've been absent for a couple of weeks now. Um, we sadly had a loss in our family just a few days before Christmas and so understandably I took a little break from social media and from filming to spend time with family and to process what had happened. Um, it was a little bit unexpected so yeah we've just been dealing with that. Uh, however um, I didn't want to stay away too long because you know, I do feel that whilst a loss like that is quite devastating, um, it is an unfortunate but necessary part of life. And I think that the best thing we can do to honour those who have left us is to enjoy our lives and continue on and keep doing the things that we love doing and I love talking about perfume so that is what I'm here to do today. So in honour of the person who has left us I have decided to do a review of her favourite perfume and her signature perfume. So this fragrance as you would have gathered by the title by now I'm sure is Safari by Ralph Lauren. I have here an older bottle, but I'm pretty sure the bottle has remained the same over the past few years. Um, it has a really lovely sort of tortoiseshell panel on the top, a really intricately carved bottle and intricately carved lid. Um, the juice is this beautiful golden ambery color, which I just love. And I also, very much enjoy this fragrance and I thought I had figured out this fragrance or had it figured out in my mind and then recently I wore it again and realized that I learned something new about this fragrance. So it is nice to know that even fragrances that you've known for quite some time um, or thought that you knew and thought you had figured out can still surprise you. The nose behind this fragrance is Dominique Roupillon. It was launched in 1990, so it's, I guess technically it's considered vintage now, but um, 1990 still doesn't feel like it was that long ago for me. So uh, take with that what you will. Um, however, even though it was made in the 90s, I feel that this fragrance has an older world feel to it. It feels like it's quite classic in style. The golden colour of this fragrance echoes, I guess, the golden nature of the scent itself. So I'll read you the note listing for this fragrance, although it's quite extensive and I don't feel like I necessarily get everything, which in itself is not that uncommon for a fragrance of this nature because I think these older style uh, traditional kind of fragrances I feel like I don't necessarily always get each note individually which I actually kind of like. So the top notes are galbanum, marigold, narcissus, hyacinth, orange, blackcurrant, Mandarin Orange and Cassis. The middle notes are Narcissus, Orris Root, Rosemary, Italian Jasmine, Rose and Orange Blossom. And the base notes are Vetiver, Amber, Sandalwood, Cedar and Patchouli. So there is quite a lot going on in here as you can see. I do have a card here which I sprayed a little while ago so that's dried down nicely and I think um, I will spray a new card now just to get a reminder of the opening. So immediately in the opening I find it to be quite green. It's very rich smelling. 
If I'm imagining colors, I imagine the opening to be quite golden and green. I feel it's quite grassy, so I assume that I'm getting a lot of that galbanum in the opening. It's also quite sparkly. Uh, I think there are aldehydes in here. I also feel, not that I really know what marigold smells like, but I feel like I'm getting notes in here that I would imagine would smell like marigold. The kind of a herbaceous, dry, earthy kind of floral. The opening uh, is actually quite sharp, I think. And I can imagine that it might not be for everybody, particularly if you're not a fan of green type fragrances. I think it is aptly named because it does conjure up for me an image of fields of some kind of crop where the crop is starting to mature. So, you know, when, when farmers first plant a crop and it grows, it's all very green. And then slowly over a few weeks or a few months, the crop goes from this green, fresh, vibrant, young crop to um, these more golden hued um, aged plants. So I'm thinking, I think in my mind, I'm thinking of things like hay where it starts green and then it transitions to gold and it's really bright. It's very warming and it's very fresh, but dry. For that reason, it's quite a fresh fragrance really. Um, although those florals are are quite present you know I mean it's it this fragrance does really have a presence I interestingly haven't found that much written about this fragrance particularly I've in any of the perfume books that I have this one is not discussed um, the male version the men's version of Safari is mentioned in Luca Turin's book um, and I think he described it as trashy, which I found quite amusing. I actually haven't smelled the men's version, but I imagine it's probably of a similar ilk to this one. Maybe with less florals, perhaps. Future editing Cherie here. One thing I did forget to mention when I was talking about this fragrance earlier was the fact that that opening, though it is quite green, uh, it's quite, there is a hint of sweetness to it and I'm not sure if it's coming from the orange blossom or if there's something else in there that's giving it a hint of sweetness but I do find that as far as green fragrances go I find this not as punchy or as stringent as some others that I quite enjoy but which I know other people don't enjoy so much. So if you're someone who shies away from green fragrances because of those elements of the green notes, then perhaps this is one that's still worth checking out because I really think that the, the florals and whatever else is in there that's giving it a sweetness does tend to soften the edges of those green notes and makes it quite palatable, I think, for people who perhaps traditionally might not have enjoyed the more green nuances to this fragrance. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there. I felt it was really important to acknowledge that distinction between this fragrance and say other green floral type fragrances, because I do feel like those elements are what makes this fragrance quite unique compared to others in this genre. All right, back to the original broadcast. This fragrance, um, the florals in the mid are really quite something, you know, they are very bold, very enveloping and very, it's a very rich, deep smelling fragrance, but it's not dark smelling. So you still get those beautiful golden hues and this sensation of being outdoors on a warm day maybe with a little bit of pollen flying through the air and maybe your nose is a little tickly as well from that. That's, that's the sensation I get when I smell this fragrance. I don't know if I get any particular floral jumping out at me. I feel like I just get 
lots of florals. I think I can detect the jasmine and the soapiness of the orange blossom, but otherwise I just feel like I get this really beautiful mishmash of floral notes with grassy notes and there's a dryness to it as well. The base notes are mostly all very woody type notes, but I will say that out of all of the notes that are listed in this fragrance, in the dry down, what I tend to get the most is the orris root. In fact, the other day I was describing this to a friend and I said it was really surprising to me because I'd always in my mind kind of imagined this fragrance as a really, you know, fresh, dry, green floral sheep. And in fact, you know, I'd never really paid attention to the dry down that much and possibly because I don't wear this fragrance that much. I love this fragrance, but because it is somebody else's signature scent, um, I've never really worn it extensively, I guess out of respect for that person and the fact that it's, it's their scent. Um, and perhaps I'll wear it now more just as, as a way of remembering her. But the other day I wore this and I, what jumped out at me the most was this orris fruit. It's quite distinctive. It's quite, um, I, I want to say there's a denseness to it as you would imagine. So it's that really old style orris root. It's got that thick, dense, makeup-y kind of vibe to it, but balanced against these grassy notes, these fresh florals, I find that it's not actually, it doesn't feel really super thick and heavy, but at the same time it is, there is definitely got, it's really got denseness to it. And, so it's dense without being weighed down and, and dark and heavy, but um, it really packs a punch and it lasts a really, really long time. At least the version that I have does. This fragrance really has a lot of presence and I think you would, it would be hard, you'd be hard pressed to wear this and not have people notice you. You know, I do find when this person wore this fragrance, you just knew immediately if she was in the room. I sprayed this on a card a few hours ago uh, down in this room and then I went upstairs and, and did some other chores and came back down to film this video and I could smell all the fragrance everywhere and all I did was spray it a couple of times. So it is quite a big noticeable fragrance and um, it's really beautiful. It's very opulent and very warm and I, it really does conjure up images of sun-kissed rolling fields, you know, in the, in the warmer months. So it does have a sense of freedom about it, which I really, really enjoy. And I think it's airy and bright enough to um, wear well through the day as a daytime scent but I also think it would work really well in a nighttime setting because it does really pack a punch and it is quite opulent. So I think it would hold its own in an evening setting as well. So yeah, I don't know if I have anything else to say about this fragrance. I really love it. Let me know if you have tried it and if you liked it. I, again, I, th I think it has been discontinued, but I'm not entirely sure about that and I hope I'm wrong because I think it's a fantastic fragrance and I think perhaps deserved of way more attention than it's had to date. All right, I'm going to leave it there. But thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to 2022. I hope 2022 holds wonderful things for you and that it has started well for you and that hopefully we can all start putting the troublesome times we've had recently behind us and find ourselves in the company of humans more regularly once again. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. You had me at a low Cause where you go is where I go